David Ching. I'm AOL's digital prophet. I've spent 80% of my time scouring the digital landscape for trends. 20% of the time I'm jamming on AOL. Who does your hair? <laughs> <laughs> I do. Years of experience. So the impact of you know, influence, it's really impacting AOL's business, primarily around video. In fact, I'll give you two examples. It's video and social. So about a year ago, you know, we, we acquired the Huffington Post, and that's a, that's a crazy social engine for two reasons. One, the people who comment in there, they're, they're very, they're high commenters. So they spend a lot of time in that environment, and they're impassioned not just about the story, but the responses to the story. So it's one of those very rare environments where the community work, really works. And probably the difference between Huffington Post and Facebook is that Facebook's an empty platform that you build your Lego blocks on top of. The Lego building is already built at Huffington Post, so we're already in part of that influencer because a lot of the writers uh, are celebrities, which kind of r leads me to video. So what we're, what we're really producing at the moment with this new product launch of AOL on, it's about influencers. That's where we started. And we just happen to call them curators. So if I actually want to follow people's video tastes, you know, I'm going to start with their influence and how they influence what I do. So it's, it's paramount for what we do. So the path to purchase for me is, you know, we, we, it's critical, you know, to go from pages to parking lots. So we understand that. Bridging that, however, is challenging. But digital is probably the best experience to be able to qualify that. Let me give you an example. So instead of going broad-based in terms of a campaign, you could really focus in on compressing the path and actually allowing people to get a direct path to the purchase. I showcased something that was Adidas, where I could rotate between different pictures of a, of a product that was showcased around a pair of sneakers that I owned. So it gave me a, a sense of the fashion taste. Once I locked onto a pair of sneakers, it then told me where it was located. So if, to me, that's very good. The other example is where the path to purchase is bridged in the physical world. So take, for example, InStyle Magazine doing a fashion full spread. That could be connected to a digital device, and then on from that could be straight path to purchase, which is this is where it's available in your area. So it's location-based physically, but it could be done equally digitally. So I think influence and path to purchase is key, but it's, for me it's a compression. So it all comes down to the thin, the thin edge of you know, how do you actually get people into doing that, that frequency? How do you get them into that habit of buying that way, that habit? Mm. A really complex question. I think you know, the digital consumer for me in the future really comes down to somebody who's more human. So something that I didn't harp on, but let me just express that really quickly. Let me use this from a data point of one, me. So about 10 years ago, I was, you know, I'd spent 16 hours a day sitting in front of a terminal trying to figure out how to sort of create an interesting startup. Fast forward to today, you know, I would be the guy on a Friday night falling asleep at the dinner table. I've changed my habits where what I can do is make sure the digital enhances my offline experience. So I'm a better conversationalist at the dinner table, I'm a better husband in terms of being present. So I use my time more effectively, um, and digital isn't the only place to be it. So I think we're going to go back to being more human. So if the web can be used to make people more human, then I think that's a great success, and I think that's what's going to happen in the future.